why do the last two endocrinologists I've seen insist that amylin reduces, uh, I guess it's type 2 diabetes or diabetes. Does that apply to type 1s following your way of eating? Okay. Um, first of all, uh, amylin is a hormone available on the market by injection. Brand name is Simlin. Uh, there may be another amylin on, with another brand name, but the one that I know is Simlin. And it doesn't stop diabetes, to my knowledge, but can have a slight effect upon blood sugar. Uh, it can lower, uh, in, their, in their published studies, it probably lowers uh, A1C by 0.3%, which is not very much. Mm -hmm. However... In my experience, it uh, is a rapid-acting agent to control overeating. In fact, it's probably the major satiety agent of the brain. Uh, although it's made by the beta cells in the pancreas, um, it does tell the brain that uh, this fellow isn't hungry right now. Uh, he should stop eating. So uh, I use it for that purpose. And I use it in many type 1 people and in many type 2 people. Uh, the person who says, uh, I only overeat when we go to a restaurant. So since amylin is rapid acting, starts working about a half hour after you inject it, I say, Inject it a half hour before you expect to be ordering and you're going to be less interested in the food and you're probably going to be able to resist uh, eating the rolls that they put on the table for your friends. Right. Um, and it's frequently very effective. Um, it's related to GLP-1 agonists like Victoza and Bayetta, uh, it's, uh, um, it's more rapid acting. Uh, but one problem with all of these agents is that for many people, a tolerance develops after a period of X months um, where it no longer curbs the appetite. On the other hand, I have people using it for years and it keeps working. Uh -huh. So uh, if you have a type 1 diabetic who's an overeater uh, and if you can focus the amylin injection to the time of day that they overeat because it's, it's rapid acting, it's over in about three or four hours, um, it's uh, uh, helpful for curbing overeating and regardless of what the manufacturer says or doctors say, uh, uh, it can be used in type 1 diabetics to curb their overeating. Uh, a similar product, a GLP-1 agonist, uh, has recently been sold, put on the market for sale to non-diabetics to stop them from overeating. It's identical to the product Victoza, but given a new name and prescribed in larger doses for overeating than Victoza has been prescribed. So um, about the only function for all of these products is for overeating, and it's fine for type 1s as well as type 2s. It can lower the blood sugar sh slightly at the meal, but uh, you learn to uh, lower your insulin dose for that meal if you're taking insulin, uh, if it's lowering your blood sugar. And if you're uh, not overeating, you'll probably need less insulin than you have been in the past. Another amylin-related question is a, a mother has a, a child that's following your diet and they're always hungry and she's feeding so much uh, protein, I guess the child is um, gaining weight in a negative way. Uh, and is this related to an, an, an amylin issue? Well... Does the question really say that she's feeding him a lot of protein? Or she say that she's feeding him a lot of food? 
Well, I don't, uh, that, that's a good question. I know that they're they're following the low carb diet, and she's trying to give protein foods. So okay. Well, if and the and the kid's getting fat. Right. Okay. Uh, I don't know the rest of the story, so my answer is going to be a guess. But um, I would think that small doses of amylin would be re reasonably safe for a kid because it's a natural hormone. It's made by the beta cells, and a kid who's a type 1 diabetic probably has few or no beta cells left and is deficient in amylin. So he needs something to tell his brain that he's had enough to eat. Right. So that is one real possibility. Uh, amylin also slows stomach emptying uh, so that um, you're likely to remain full longer from a meal, and this is natural. Uh, so uh, it's uh, certainly a possible solution, but I would think uh, also about... Uh, I've, I've treated a number of kids, and I noticed that the younger ones seem to need snacks. They all, uh, they all seem to get hungry like uh, three or four hours after a meal. Yeah. And you give them a small snack, and usually you can get away with it. Some of them you have to uh, cover, the, most of them I would say, you'd have to cover them the snack with some insulin. And it might be such a small snack that you have to use diluted insulin. Yep. Um, so uh, where I don't give snacks to adults because uh, uh, giving additional insulin causes, complica causes difficulties in the regimen, makes for more work. Uh, uh, for a kid, you may have no other choice. I haven't tried amylin because uh, usually these kids are not getting too fat. Right. They're getting hungry and they need that protein. Right. Um, but if the kid's getting too fat, I see no reason not to use small doses of amylin. You can start at very low doses. Okay.